So welcome everybody. Today is August the 22nd, 2019, and you're listening to a new human experience podcast. The topic tonight is stepping beyond family patterns. And the reason why I came up with this topic is that I really want to, um, it's like last week was on emotional freedom. This week is kind of a little bit different, looking at um, letting go of uh, uh, emotional patterns or behavioral patterns and belief patterns in a slightly different way, is to start looking at family patterns, the family patterns that we either adopted uh, consciously or unconsciously, and also how we um, inherited even from our gene, uh, talking about genes, because the, 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 the end goal is to start to reactivate ourselves from a DNA level. And from what I understand is that our emotions shape our, um, actually how our cells look, how our blood looks. Uh, the more we can release emotions, the, the, um, the healthier our cells become. Because when we have all these different emotions, the, our energy is distorted. And instead of being a nice round shape, it kind of becomes more elliptical. That's when we know that our, um, we are not actually functioning at our optimum. And when we start to release toxins, whether it is energetic toxins or or actually chemical toxins from our body, our cells can start to regenerate and become healthy again. And our ability to heal ourselves, to be able to um, feel at a higher vibration would come back. So that's why I want to look at the how to clear emotions from a different angle, which is looking at family patterns. We are eternal spirits and we having a human experience on earth. And just to recap is that earth about 10,000 years ago, we as the whole collective, the, the, the earth collective has agreed to um, enter into an experiment, an experiment to experience extreme polarity. And so when the Earth Collective agreed to that, then certain things have to happen, certain structure has to happen to support us in having this experience of, of um, experiencing polarity, of experiencing good and bad. And so all this, so there's a lot of structures being put in. Um, for example, we, we, start, we have the artificial intelligence component our ego as well is part of that and also um, family patterns is one of those structure that that helps to keep us limited now i'm not saying that family is limiting family uh, in itself in and of itself the um the original intention of family is not to limit us it's actually to give us a very healthy and um, a, a great start. However, the way we experience the family structure in the modern day, the, the one that I'm familiar with currently is very limiting and it's designed to be very limiting. So the most prevalent setup in family is that um, you have to conform to the family pattern. You have to somehow earn love. You have to deserve love. You have to listen to your parents and you have to treat your, uh, your parents and um, the adults around you in a certain way in order to um, really earn their love or somehow and if you break if you don't follow that pattern then you um are not being you're not being nurtured as a 
someone who is、um, following and towing the family line, and that kind of、uh, it's stemming from the one thing is that we really don't know who we are, and the more we become、um, entrenched in this duality of not knowing who we are, and starting to believe that we are this body. And when we start to、um, be more limited to just thinking of ourselves as being this body, and this body has been created or procreated by our parents, that really give our parents、um, a in a very、um, I would say special position, so that we. Feel like we don't have a choice but to listen to what they have to say and adopt their their patterns more than、um, rather than listening to ourselves, our inner selves. And of course, we always have the choice to do that. However, with that choice to follow our own truth, there is that alienation, that feeling of alienation being built in because. Most parents are not、um, very enlightened.、Uh, some of them don't even have the the basic education, and most of them really are still on the survival base, and they、um, they don't know better. It's not their fault. It's just that they have never been they have never been brought up knowing who they are. So that's why they are behaving the way they are. And so a lot of the times is like we have. I, I remember working with、um, some of my clients, and I remember one one time.、Uh, this may be a little extreme case, however, I would just say it to to、um, illustrate a point. Is、uh, my this is a client of mine that I it's an old client long time ago, and so I remember what she told me was that his father、um, it, like. Really intentionally decided to rape her mother so that she can give birth to a、um, a, um, a child for her. So that was his intention. He wanted the most like the most beautiful woman in order to create this child for her, for for him. And.、Um, So what her father was like, her father provided for her. However, it's like whenever his father needed to have sex, he would like he would be、um, having sex with any one of his daughter that is closest to her. So that's the kind of mentality in、uh, where she grew up. And so this is like. Like、when I listened to it, it was like this is crazy. I mean, you should have this guy locked up. However, that was her environment, and she didn't know any better, and she was not、um, raised to think of any other way. It is only when she actually left her home home country and started to come in into Canada and start to、um, have a different. Perspective. That's when she realized that not all parents are like that. Not all parents come together like that, and and so that's that may be a little bit extreme case. However, I have worked with enough enough clients and and really、um, talked to enough friends to know that yeah, that may be slightly more extreme. However, it's not entirely out of the norm. In various ways, our parents、um, didn't really do this. The way they they bring up、uh, a child, it because they really don't know any better. They completely they completely into thinking that they are this human being and they have to do whatever it takes in order to survive. And they completely cut off from their spiritual heritage. They completely do not really have any idea that the real, the real me, the real them, the real,、uh, the real being that is residing in these bodies are eternal spirit, and we are just here to experience, to have a human experience, 
you know, to have whatever experience it is that we um, came here for. So a lot of the times we kind of, um, I would say childhood is, is more like um, we're surviving a trauma, which is our being brought up in family and all the, the um, I would say all the beliefs, no matter how, how inhumane it may seem in hindsight, that's how we grew up in. And the, the craziest thing is that it's almost like we all suffering from Stockholm syndrome is that we cling on to our parents and also we cling on to their belief system or, or all of their projections onto us for dear life. It's like we, uh, Stockholm syndrome is that we become identified with our tormentors, with the, the, the people that are actually um, really uh, held us in hostage. So that's what I would say most of our normal childhood is like. And not too many people, um, I, would say, I would say at least 50% or more than 50% uh, or actually larger than 50% of the population would be, this would be normal for them. Some may have it like really bad and some slightly better. However, um, far and few between would be someone that has very conscious and um, parents who understand their impact on their children and really consciously bring up their their children so maybe nowadays i would say in the last 20 to 30 years people are more conscious parents are more conscious and they actually, uh, some of them went into the other, uh, swung to the other spectrum. Is they, they become too aware and, and they actually err on the other side as well, being too indulgent rather than being too, um, I would say, restricting, too limiting. So the good news, the very, very good news is that that experiment is over and the earth collective has already agreed to have a very different kind of experience which is the fifth dimensional kind of experience and it's and we are actually on our way for a course correction path and we are on the ascension path so what do i mean by ascension um so ascension the way i understand it is just there's just one thing that's different that's that I know of that's that really define the difference between ascending and not ascending. If you're not ascending, then you're still staying in your head. You're still using your thinking and you believing that what you think is who you are. And so that's why the, the, the people there, there are actually uh, philosophers that think that says that I think therefore I am. So this, this glorification of our thinking faculty is what um, actually led us to the, 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 the dark side, <laughs> let's put it that way. And ascension is simply to, instead of relying on our thinking, is to go back into our heart, which is really um, relying on our being. So when we are be in our heart, that's when if you just look at the the organ itself our brain our brain is there are at, at least two halves the left brain and the right brain and of course there are also the brain stem and there so the brain itself is um, set up to be duality left and right so that's actually what the um, thinking is oh actually i just remember something and I would like to do this is actually mute everybody okay that's why so sorry about that I forgot to mute you all now let's continue so when we if you just look at the organs so when we thinking when we rely on our thinking it's left and right brain so it's already set up in duality 
However, when we go back into our heart, when we move from relying on our brain and back into our heart, our heart is actually where we, our soul can communicate with us. That, when, that is um, the organ. If you look at the heart itself, there's one heart. So just by looking at the organ itself, it's a oneness and wholeness. Um, that is really the, the, the blueprint of um, living from our heart. That's, the heart is also where we hear messages from our soul and be connected to our higher self and connected to our star being, our spiritual being of who we are. And when we get to move out of our head, to move out of needing to control everything, needing to know everything, or needing to have all these information and start to go into our being, then that is what ascension is. Because when we are connected to who we truly are, which is the eternal part of ourselves, and be linked to receiving information from our soul and from our higher self, and be able to also be connected with everyone else when we are in a heart space, that's when oneness becomes um, the norm. That that's when we when we cannot say that um, when we cannot support duality anymore. When we start to know that there is only one, and that yes, the other person may have a different body. However, in spirit, we are all one. When we get back to that, that's really what ascension means to us. So ascension, how do we get there? How do we make use of, um, how do we step beyond the, the family patterns that we have, uh, for, for better or worse, adopted? Because our family patterns is really, we took on those patterns and they are our foundation. And when we start to break those up, when we start to break up, then that is, um, it's not easy. It's, it's, it seems very scary, especially to our ego thinking, because it's like a death, because it is, it's, in a way, it is like a death, because it is, we are saying goodbye to the person that we have known for, for, as, for such a long time since we were born. When, so when we start to do that work, there is that, perceived or illusion that we are dying. So there's a lot of anxiety about changing. There's a lot of anxiety about making this journey to um, start to ascend. So the, the best way that I can, that I know of is remember one thing that it, then that is that we are love. Instead of thinking that we need to um, conform to a certain way of uh, thinking for, to be uh, in order to relate to everyone in our family is to really remember that we are love and let that sink in. We don't need to earn love. We don't need to have somebody tell us they love us. It's all from inside. When you really remember who you are and who you are is simply love, personified, and that's who you are. And that in and of yourself, it's already enough. You don't have to, you don't have to please anyone. You don't have to people please anymore. You don't have to do anything to earn love. You don't have to have a career in order to develop your self-esteem in, in, in order to think that you are somehow worthy in other people's eyes. There's no such thing as not worthy anymore. Worthiness is really an illusion. The fact that you are alive, that you are in this reality playing, you're already worthy. You don't need anything else outside of that. 
And when you truly start to live from there, start to live from that, knowing that you are love and you are enough. And no matter what shows up outside of you, no matter what people say to you or do not say to you, you are still love. And when you truly get that, then that's the, the easiest, I would say, well, okay, <laughs> let me take that back. Maybe not the easiest. That's the simplest way to step beyond family pattern, to step beyond any pattern, really. And you, when you really know that you are love and you don't need to prove anything, you don't need to be anything, you don't need to um, be like to 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 agree with someone just because you want them to like you, and that you can just say whatever it is that's that is true for you and real for you, and just own that, own who you are so much so, but without being arrogant, without needing to push your point of view onto like into someone else's, down someone else's throat. I mean, you can just be yourself and just know that you are loved no matter what you say, do, or be, or don't do, say, do, or be. And when you have that, it's a very simple concept. That's not to, to confuse it as being easy because we, we were never or few of us were ever brought up to realize that we are love. We actually were brought up to make sure that we need to earn love, that we need to have someone else tell us that they love us. And that's just an illusion. That's just the, the, that's the setup. That's because we don't know who we truly are. And when we finally come home to who we truly are when we start to understand that we are love we don't need to be loved we don't need to earn love we don't need to do anything that just from the the fact that we are in this reality and to know that that's all we need to know is that we are love and anything that causes you to um, have a different feeling from being loved, then you know that there is a story that is somehow supporting you to have this non-love feeling. So anything that causes you to feel non-love, that's a red flag. That's for you to, to look at and say, hmm, and start to um, be the investigator to, to kind of trace back. So what is, what story am I holding on to that allows me to have this illusion that I am not love? Because that is a lie. The truth, the only truth there is, is that you are love. I am love. There's nothing else. There is only love. And that we, we cannot exist without love. And we are just love personified. And any other experience we have is just an illusion. It's just because there is a story and we somehow, either we consciously or unconsciously, decided to um, adopt that different story in order to have an experience. And, and once you realize that, then it is truly a choice. You have, you have a choice to choose to keep that if that experience is something that you still want to um, have in your life, then it becomes a choice. And it's totally okay if you decided that you need to have someone outside of you to tell you to love you because you are your source. Whatever you want to experience, that is mm -hmm. totally up to you. So, um, and there's, there's no right or wrong to it. It's just your preference. So when you get to that, then it becomes simple. It's so simple. You are love and anything that causes you to feel otherwise is an illusion. 
So that is, um, if you start to do work on that, start to know that when you have an experience, when, when uh, like I have um, experienced that, um, for example, <clears throat> I have some um, people that is um, sharing a, a, a living space with me right now that they come from a very different culture than me. They eat with their hands because that's from their culture. That is what. So when I, every time I look at that, I was like, ah, how can they do that? I mean, it's so backwards. And that's just, and I, I, and I feel this like, like grinding um, experience. However, that's just because I have that story that, you know, um, if you're a civilized person, then you eat with knives and forks. You eat with a spoon or something. That's just a story. And it's completely okay for them to eat with their hands. It's just that I have the story that, you know, this, if you don't use um, cutlery, then you're, you're barbaric. But that's, that's so much a lie. That's not true. There are lots of people that use with their hands, and there are actually very good reasons why we want to live, why we want to eat with our hands, because our hands actually, um, it's much more tactile and give our, ourselves a different experience in putting food into our, our mouth. So that's, and when I realize that I have a choice to either still have that experience, every time I see them eat with their hands or not. So if I choose to not, then I can just process that and let that go and let that, that limiting belief go that like, if you eat with your hands, you're not civilized. That's just a story. So that's really what it's all about is anything that shows up in your, um, in your life that causes you to have this grinding or non-love feeling then that's something that's a red flag for you to look at and the more you do that the more you will start to break out of your patterns your beliefs the more you can start to look at every aspect in your life and be able to step beyond whatever family patterns that you have i don't care how foundation they are how much they are a part of you they're not because you are joy, light, love. Anything other than that is not you. It's just a pattern that you have adopted. So when you really understand that and start to take steps, then that's how you move away from those patterns. So that's all I want to talk about today.